Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a special Tuesday afternoon edition of the Friday Night Locker Room. I'm Steve Wilson coming to you live from the campus of Melbourne Central Catholic, where this afternoon the Hustlers from MCC play host to the Satellite Scorps in a region semifinal baseball game winner will advance and play a week from today. The loser of tonight's contest, their season will come to an end. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in this afternoon. Weather looks promising. A few clouds out and about, but I think we're going to be fine. This game's scheduled to get underway at 4 o'clock. Head coaches are meeting with the umpires at home plate. I wouldn't be surprised if we get started just a few minutes early. It happened last week when the Hustlers were the home team. They started about eight or nine minutes early. Going to not quite get that much of a jump start, but we are just a few minutes away from the first pitch of this afternoon's contest between the Satellite Scorps and the MCC Hustlers. We'd like to thank our title sponsor, Microb and Nissan Cadillac, for sponsoring tonight's contest, along with our buddies at SpaceCoastDaily.com. Of course, that's Giles Malone, Tom Palermo, Zach Clark, Allison Malone, Dr. Jim Palermo, the whole crew at SpaceCoastDaily.com really does it right. Besides Micro and Nissan Cadillac, we'd like to thank Beefo Brady's State Road 524 in Coco, Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office, Planet Fitness located in Rockledge. We'd like to thank Florida Master Temp, Al's Trophy Shop, which reminds me, we will be presenting a Friday Night Locker Room Player of the Game immediately after the contest between the Scorps and the Hustlers. Moving on, we'd like to thank Space Coast Tire, Community Bank of the South, Custom Print, Screen Printing, Barry Signs Incorporated, Jimmy's Restaurant, and DeCandio and Associates Allstate Insurance. We'll go down the starting lineup this afternoon for both squads, the Satellite Scorps and the MCC Hustlers, the visiting, visiting Scorps in all red this afternoon, trimmed in white Hustlers and white trimmed in green starting tonight or this afternoon, ready for the Scorps. Batting first, playing shortstop number 11, Dale McGuhan. Batting second, left fielder number six, Jose Barris. Batting third for satellite, catcher number 21, Tyler Cameron. Cleanup hitter this afternoon for the Scorps. Designated hitter number 14, Kendall Karcher. Batting fifth, first baseman number five, Trey Rich. Batting sixth, second baseman number three, Jackson Prater. Batting seventh for the Scorps, right fielder, Number eight, Chet Moore. Batting eighth, third baseman, number 24, Alec Eldridge. And batting ninth, playing center field, number two, Dylan Wagner. Doing the pitching this afternoon for the Scorps, Jackson Vasellas. Now you're starting lining up this afternoon for the home team, the MCC Hustlers. Batting first, playing second base, number 15, Coleman LaRoche. Batting second, Shortstop number five, Jack Nagy. Batting third, doing the catching, number 10, Christian Smallwood. The cleanup hitter this afternoon for MCC, right fielder number eight, Austin Nickel. Batting fifth, doing the pitching, number 16, Mark Potter. Batting sixth, left fielder number 23, S.P. Perry. Batting seventh this afternoon for the Hustlers, center fielder number six, Will Erdman. Batting eighth, Designated hitter number 24, Jackson Taylor. And batting ninth for MCC, playing third base, number seven, Ryan Coscarello. Defensively for the Hustlers over at first base will be number four, Nick Durgin. This is the game that will advance one of these two teams to region final action a week from today. These are two teams that are very familiar with each other, have played a number of times throughout the course of the season. Hard to get a read on exactly what's going to happen this afternoon. We've had a one to nothing game. We've had a 10 to nothing game. Last time these two teams meet, met in the district finals, it was an early nine to nothing lead for the Scorps. MCC came back and won the game 12 to nine. So we're going to take a short break for the national anthem and we will return for the first pitch.
All right, we are moments away from pitch number one between the Hustlers and the Scorps. We'll set the defense for MCC going around the horn out in left field. S.P. Perry, center fielder this afternoon for MCC. Will Erdman over in right field, Austin Nickel. In the infield, third baseman Ryan Coscarello. Shortstop Jack Nagy. Second baseman Coleman LaRoche. Playing first base this afternoon for MCC, Nick Durgin. In the battery this afternoon for the MCC Hustlers. Behind the plate, Christian Smallwood. And on, on the mound, the big guy, number 16, Mark Potter. Potter, former Friday night locker room player of the game for his play last week in the region quarterfinal game. Big hard throwing right hander, Potter's 6'6, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 230. He'll be facing a tough lineup this afternoon in the Satellite Scorps. They've won 19 baseball games this year, only lost 10. The Hustlers come in with a 28 and 1 record, so on paper you have to say. The MCC Hustlers are the favorite, but as we all know, this time of the year, what's happened in the past means nothing. The games, the previous games mean nothing. It could give you, at times, a slight mental advantage, but I don't see it this afternoon. There's so much at stake. I know Coach Jason Arnold of the Scorps has got his kids pumped up, as has Tom Dooley, head coach of the MCC Hustlers. Mark Potter taking his last throw towards home plate. So once again, the winner of this afternoon's contest will play the winner of the Lakewood Sarasota Booker game that's being played tonight. Depending on who wins what, you never know who will be the home team. We'll have to let the games play out today, and we are moments away from pitch number one is Dale McGuhan. Shortstop for the Scorps is about set to step into the batter's box. He'll be hitting from the right side. On deck, Jose Barris in the hole for the Scorps, the catcher, number 21, Tyler Cameron. First pitch start time. If my watch is accurate, I show 359. Mark Potter gets the sign. First pitch by the big guy inside. One ball and no strikes to Dale McGuhan. Slight breeze blowing from left to right from the left field fence towards the right field fence. Second pitch, ground ball to Hopper to Nagy. Easily throws it across a diamond. Nice start defensively for the Hustlers. Jack Nagy on a two hopper, feels it cleanly. Fires it over to Nick Durgan to record the first out of this game. That'll bring up the Scorps left fielder, number six, Jose Barris. Barris will be hitting from the left side. Very early in this baseball game. A few scattered clouds, the sun is out as we speak. Potter gets the sign from catcher Christian Smallwood, call strike, no balls and one strike on the Scorps shortstop. Steps out just for a second, now back into the batter's box from the left side, pitch by Potter. Swing and a miss quickly in a hole. No balls and two strikes is Jose Barris. Barris once again steps back, takes a quick look at the home plate umpire. Now he digs in. He's got to swing at anything close. He'll be looking at an 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Jose Barris goes down on strikes. So quickly they're two up and two down in the top of the first inning. And that'll bring up the catcher, number 21, Tyler Car Cameron. Cameron will step in, hitting from the right side for Coach Jason Arnold's Satellite Scorps. Cameron's hit by the first pitch. He'll walk down to first base. That'll put the first baser base runner on of this baseball game, top of the first inning, no score. That'll bring up the Scorps designated hitter, number 14, Kendall Karcher. Karcher swings the bat well. He has five doubles and eight, eight RBIs in four postseason games. Of course, that includes the district playoff games and the region quarterfinal game. 
Karcher will hit from the right side. Trey Rich will be on deck for the Scorps. Potter will be going from the stretch, takes a glance over towards first base, home with the pitch. Pop to short left field. Coming in is the left fielder to record the out. Nice play by S.P. Perry. Took about five or, step, five or six steps in to record the third out here in the top of the first inning. So for the Satellite Scorps in the top of inning number one, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one runner left. After one half inning of play this afternoon, <coughs> excuse me, Satellite nothing, MCC coming to bat. We're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, set the defense for you. For the Satellite Scorps, <clears throat> excuse me. Out in left field, number six, Jose Barris, center fielder this afternoon for Satellite. Dylan Wagner, over in right field, Chet Moore, going around the infield, third baseman. Number 24, Alec Eldridge, shortstop this afternoon, Dale McCuhan, second baseman for Satellite, Jackson Prater. Over at first base, Trey Rich. The battery this afternoon for the Satellite Scorps. Behind home plate, Tyler Cameron. And on the mound, Jackson Vasellas. We have a pair of former Friday night locker room players of the game going at it on the mound. Potter won last week in a region quarterfinal game. Jackson Vasellas won the Friday night locker room player of the game about two months ago, early in the season. Vassellis th throws the ball extremely, extremely well, throws from the right side, comes into this afternoon's con contest with a 1.62 ERA. Sorry, committed to play ball and attend Creighton University. Struck out 90 batters on the year. Vassellis is a good one. Once again, we'd like to thank our title sponsor, Microb and Nissan Cadillac. The dealership located on the 520 Causeway Merritt Island is an authorized sales and service outlet for new Nissan and Cadillac products, and it carries a line of used cars and trucks. The website, microbmanmotors.com. The telephone, 453-2050. We'd also like to thank Beefo Brady's State Road 524 in Cocoa. Sean O'Reilly, Timmy O'Reilly, the whole gang of beefs have always been big supporters of local sports, and the tie-in with the Friday Night Locker Room is a natural. The menu includes chicken, steak, and fish taco baskets, and, of course, wings. Thanks to Sean O'Reilly, Beef O'Brady's, State Road 524 in Cocoa. Next time you're at Beefs, take, check out the new banners on the wall. This is the Beef O'Brady's Coaches Corner, sponsored by the Friday Night Locker Room and Space Coast Daily. It's pretty neat, they have a, a couple of banners on either end. As we are just about set to move to the bottom of the first inning for the Hustlers, it'll be Coleman LaRoche, Jack Nagy, and Christian Smallwood. LaRoche hitting from the right side, wearing number 15. He's about set to step into the batter's box. First pitch by Vassellis it's inside, one ball and no strikes. Scorps had one base runner in the top of the first inning. Tyler Cameron was hit by a pitch. Other than that, Mark Potter was sharp and strong in the first inning, off speed pitches high, two balls and no strikes on the Hustlers leadoff batter. MCC would like to do what they did not do last time they played satellite. That's jump on top of the Scorps. That pitch is low in the zone so quickly. Three balls and no strikes to the leadoff hitter, Coleman LaRoche. The Scorps jumped out to a nine to nothing lead in the district final game after an inning, after an inning and a half. Somehow or another, MCC fought back and won the baseball game 12 to nine. Pitch on the corner, three balls and one strike. I know coach Tom Dooley would love to Reverse that or at least not allow the pile of runs he did early in the district contest. He was already successful in the top of the first inning. 3-1 pitch is inside. Coleman LaRoche looks at ball four. And that'll put an MCC hustler on first base with nobody out. 
in the bottom of the first inning. No score early in this contest between the Scorps and the Hustlers. That'll bring up the shortstop for MCC, number five, Jack Nagy. Nagy steps in, hitting from the right side. Vassellis from the stretch. Squares to bump, pops at foul. Nobody's gonna get to that one. No balls in one strike on the Hustlers shortstop. Trying to advance the runner. Coleman LaRoche on first, nobody out. Christian Smallwood on deck for MCC. 0-1 pitch, quick throw over to first base. Trying to keep LaRoche close is Jackson Vasellis. Once again, Scorps in all red this afternoon, trimmed in white. White stripes going down the pants, both sides, white numbers. Squares to bunt, pulls it back. Ball gets about five, six feet away, not far enough for LaRoche to advance to second base. So Nagy will be looking at a 1-1 pitch from Jackson Vasellis. LaRoche leading off first base, not too far, maybe six to seven feet from the stretch is Vasellis. Here's the pitch, squares to bunt, nice bunt back to the pitcher. Recorded as a 1-3 put out. Nagy does his job advancing the runner to second base. So now the, the Hustlers have a runner in scoring position, bottom of the first, one out. And that will bring up the catcher for the Hustlers, number 10, Christian Smallwood. Smallwood hitting from the right side. He reached base two of three times against McKeel last Tuesday, had a base hit and an RBI in that two to nothing MCC win. Swings at the first pitch, fouls it down the right field side, out of play, no balls in one strike on Smallwood. Austin Nickel, the right fielder for MCC, in the on-deck circle. Smallwood ready, the umpire is ready. Vassellis from the stretch, takes a glance towards second base, goes home with the pitch. Just a little inside, evens it up at one ball and one strike. Christian Smallwood would love somehow to get Coleman LaRoche to third base. Best case scenario for him is a base hit might bring him home. Here's the pitch by Vasellis. Nice curveball had him chasing it. One ball and two strikes. A breaking ball away from the right hander. That was a tough one to lay off and even a more difficult pitch to make contact with. So now small one looking at a one-two pitch, another breaking ball, swing and a miss, strike three, gets past him all the way to the catcher. So LaRoche is gonna advance to third and Smallwood will reach first. It was a strikeout, the ball gets past the catcher, goes all the way to, home, to the fence behind home plate. So now all of a sudden the Scorps Find themselves in a hole early in this game. MCC with runners on the corner, only one out. Eric Adler, courtesy runner for the catcher, Christian Smallwood at first base. So you've got Adler at first base, Coleman LaRoche at third base, and Austin Nickel about set to step in to the batter's box. Nickel swings the bat from the right side from the stretch, first pitch. Nice pitch by Jackson Vasellis. No balls in one strike. Does not get any easier for the Scorps. Mark Potter is on deck. Throw back to first base, trying to keep Eric Adler close. Probably wasn't the best pickoff move by Vasellis. No score early in this contest. MCC has a chance to at least dent the scoreboard. Runners on the corner. That ball fouled out of play. So quickly, it's an 0-2 count. We'll be coming up to Austin Nickel. Right, 
any kind of contact to the outfield deep enough, a sack fly would bring home LaRoche. A base hit obviously would bring home LaRoche from third base. Tried to get Nickel to chase a curveball down and away. He did not. Good job by Nickel holding up. Two strikes on the batter. You have to go after anything close. He held off on that one. One ball and two strikes. One out, bottom of the first inning. Pitch by Vasellis. Popped up. Second baseman's calling it, and he does. Jackson Prater camps under that one. So now there's two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Big pitch by Vasellis to Kit Nickel. So now that'll bring up the pitcher for the Hustlers, number 16, Mark Potter. Vasellis one out away from getting out of this jam. MCC still with a chance to do some damage here. Mark Potter was one for three last week, had a double. Struck out and flied out to center field. First pitch, swing and a miss. Strike one, fastball on the corner by Jackson Vasellis. Potter steps out, now steps back in. Right-handed Potter awaiting the pitch from Vasellis. Ground ball to second baseman. Unable to field it. It's going to be close. He cannot control the baseball, and the Scorps are down one to nothing early in this contest. It looked like a routine ground ball to second base, about three or four feet to the second baseman. Prater unable to handle it. Potter beats it out, and Coleman LaRoche scores the first run of this baseball game. So that'll bring up the left fielder, number 23, S.P. Perry. Adler advanced to second base. MCC up one to nothing, runners on first and second, two out. First pitch to S.P. Perry inside, one ball and no strikes. The left-handed hitting Perry. Awaits the pitch from Jackson Vasellis. Just a little high has run the count to two balls and no strikes. Perry handles the bat well. Quick timeout called by Jason Arnold and the Satellite Scorps. He'll visit with his defense on the mound. This timeout brought to you by Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office. They provide representation for members of the public who have suffered head trauma or a brain or spinal cord injury. Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office is located in Rockledge at 830 Executive Lane, Suite 140. The phone number for Jim Knutson, 632-2722. We'd also like to thank Planet Fitness, located at 1802 U.S. Highway 1 in Rockledge. Planet Fitness has a 23,000 square foot facility with fitness equipment and cardio machines. The phone number 321-433-1331. Planet Fitness currently undergoing renovation. They're gonna be closed for about a week and a half. They started, they shut it down last Friday. So about this time next week, they'll be opening up. It'll be a grand reopening for Planet Fitness. Timeout is taken care of. We're about ready to get back underway. Pitch to S.P. Perry is low and away. Three balls and no strikes to the Hustlers left fielder. MCC on top one to nothing. They'd love to add to that score. Runners on first and second, two outs. 3-0 pitch right down the middle. Three balls and one strike on Perry. Will Erdman on deck for the Hustlers. So now Perry will be looking at a 3-1 pitch with two outs. Pitch by the righty. Slow dribbler to the pitcher should not be a problem defensively, and it is not. Record that as a 1-3 put out. Perry just got a piece of it. Hit it to about three or four feet to the right of the pitcher, Jackson Vasellis. Flips over to the first base rather easily to Trey Rich. So for the MCC Hustlers in the bottom of the first in inning, they come up with one run, no hits, one error, and two runners left. After one inning of play this afternoon, 
MCC-1 satellite nothing. Once again, I'm Steve Wilson, a special Tuesday afternoon edition of the Friday Night Locker Room. The winner of this afternoon's contest will play the winner of the Lakewood Sarasota Booker game that will be played later in a region final game that will be played one week from today. The way the FHSAA has set things up this year, the region quarterfinal, region semifinal, and the region final are one week apart. Apart, so theoretically, you could ride one horse all the way to the state semifinals. It's an um, interesting way to do that. Years ago, they used to play them a little bit closer together, and the region final was actually a best two out of three. So you had to be loaded with talent on the mound, not so much this year to at least reach a final four. Not that it's easy, but uh, if you have one dominant pitcher, he's going to keep you competitive in every game. And this is the second consecutive game that Mark Potter has started. If the Hustlers are successful, it'll be interesting to see if he throws next Friday, or excuse me, next Tuesday. And the same can be said for Jackson Vasellas. He's pretty much the number one pitcher for the Satellite Scorps. But that's down the road a ways. First things first, we're about set to move to the top of the second inning. For the Satellite Scorps, it'll be Trey Rich, Jackson Prater, and Chet Moore for Coach Jason Arnold's squad. Rich will step in and hit from the left side. Infield at about normal depth. Third baseman is lined right up with a bag. This one's popped straight up into the infield. Center fielder charging it. Not a problem. For Will Urban in center field, it looked like it was going to go towards the shortstop. It went a little deeper than I thought it was going off the bat, but regardless, Will Erdman makes the put out. So quickly, one pitch and one out in the top of the second inning. And that'll bring up the Scorps second baseman, number three, Jackson Prater. Prater hitting from the right side. Mark Potter on the mound for the Hustlers. First pitch by number 16, foul straight back. No balls in one strike. Prater hitting in the number six slot this afternoon. Scorps coming in with a 19 and 10 record on the year. They were the district runner up, coming up short to the Hustlers. And the district final by a score of 12 to nine. They jumped out on MCC in the district finals nine to nothing after an inning and a half. MCC battled back, eventually won the game 12 to nine. One, one pitch coming up to Prater. Ground ball, one hopper to Nagy at shortstop. Throws across the diamond to record the out. Nice play once again by Jack Nagy. So two up and two down in the top of the second, and that'll bring up the right fielder for satellite number eight, Chet Moore. On deck for the Scorps, the third baseman, Alec Eldridge. Moore, a right-handed hitter, will be facing Mark Potter. Two outs in the top of the second, MCC up one to nothing. First pitch call, strike on the corner. Nice pitch by Potter. No balls in one strike. Potter set, here's the pitch. Just a little low. Evens it up at one and one. Hustlers coming in with an incredible 28 and one record this year. Playing with a lot of confidence, beat a good McKeel Academy team last week by a score of two to nothing. They're up early over the Scorps by a score of one to nothing. That ball fouled down the first base side. Runs the count to one ball and two strikes. Potter with the baseball does a little house, house cleaning, housekeeping in the front of the mound. Now he peers in, gets the sign from Christian Smallwood, his catcher. One, two pitch. Hit to right field, drifting back five, six, seven, eight feet, making the catch without a problem is Austin Nickel. So for the Satellite Scorps in the top of the second inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left. 
after an inning and a half of play this afternoon, MCC won. Satellite nothing. A lot of activity coming up the next couple of weeks in uh, central Brevard County this Friday night. It is Rockledge Night at Space Coast Stadium. Once a, once a year, the city of Rockledge partners with Space Coast Stadium. They offer ticket packages to local businesses, and really any business in Brevard County can participate. For only 100 bucks, you get 50 tickets to the Manatees baseball game this Friday. Comes out to $2 a ticket. You can That allows you to set up a table on the concourse to show you wares. You can do whatever you want to with the tickets. You can give them away. You can give them to family, friends, customers. It just doesn't matter. But uh, looking for a big crowd, a lot of excitement this Friday at Space Coast Stadium in Vieira. It'll be the Lakeland Flying Tigers going against the Brevard County Manatees. If you're interested in tickets, go to the City of Rockledge website, cityofrockledge.org, and it kind of walks you through uh, how to get either individual tickets or a ticket package. There are businesses in Central Brevard that are giving away tickets. If you'll go to the Brevard County, County Manatees website, that's manateesbaseball.com, you'll see which businesses locally are giving away tickets. But uh, you can't beat it, only two bucks ahead to get in and watch the Flying Tigers and the Manatees. That's this Friday night. We are expecting a sellout. I know the city has sold over 3,000 tickets already. As we're about to set to move to the bottom of the second inning, we'll talk more about Rockledge Night at Space Coast Stadium later in the broadcast. It'll be Will Erdman, Jackson Taylor, and Ryan Coscarello. First pitch thrown to Erdman's out of the zone, one ball and no strikes. Second pitch pretty much in the same place. Quickly, Will Erdman in control, two balls and no strikes. Erdman, one of the top athletes in Brevard County without question, was a Friday night locker room all-star, both football and basketball. Jackson Vasella still has to be careful. Here's the off-speed pitch. Just misses low and away. Three balls and no strikes. The Hustler center fielder in control. MCC one satellite nothing. We are in the bottom of inning number two. Here's the 3-0 pitch behind Will Erdman for ball four. So the center fielder for the Hustlers will reach first base here in the bottom of the second inning. And that'll bring up the designated hitter for MCC, number 24, Jackson Taylor. Taylor will be hitting from the left side. He's stretching, loosening up just a little bit. Hustlers with the runner on first, nobody out. Good speed in the person of Will Erdman. Ryan Coscarello on deck, squaring to bunt. Nice bunt back to the pitcher, will advance Erdman to second base. So Jackson Taylor does his job. Second sacrifice bunt early in this game for the Hustlers. Jack Nagy did it in the first inning. Jackson Taylor does it here in the second inning. So now the Hustlers have a runner on second, one out, up by one, and that'll bring up the third baseman, number seven, Ryan Coscarello. Coscarello hitting th from the right side, first pitch outside. Nice stop by Tyler Cameron. That pitch was way outside. Could have easily gotten past him, allowing Urban to advance to third. So good reach, good stop by Cameron. Jackson Vasellas, second consecutive inning. He's had runners in scoring position against him. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in the corner, evens it up at one and one. Nice pitch by Vasellas. Vasellas peers in, gets the sign from Tyler Cameron, takes a quick glance at Urban at second base. Goes home with the pitch. Ground ball foul down the first base side. Just got a piece of that breaking ball, which was actually pretty much in the dirt. Not quite sure how Coscarello even got a piece of that one, but he did. So the number nine batter for the Hustlers will be looking at a one ball, two strike count. Awaiting from Jackson Vasellis. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ryan Coscarello goes down on strikes. So now the Hustlers have two outs. 
They're back up to the top of their lineup. And that'll bring up second baseman number 15, Coleman LaRoche. LaRoche walked in the first inning. He scored the only game of this baseball game, MCC up one to nothing. Pitch by Vazelis just misses outside, one ball and no strikes. Jack Nagy on deck for MCC. Nice breeze blowing pretty much to center field now. Shifted around just a little bit. Call strike evens it up at one and one when this game started about 30 minutes ago. It was going straight from left field to right field. Now it's blowing straight out. So it has moved, has shifted in the last 30 minutes. Pitch by Vasellis. Low, nice stop. Once again by Tyler Cameron, the catcher for Satellite. Two balls, one strike, two outs in the bottom of the second inning. MCC up by a score of one to nothing. Vasellis gets the sign. Goes home with the pitch. Just misses inside. Now Coleman LaRoche will be awaiting a 3-1 pitch from Vasellis. LaRoche steps out, steps back in. Quick glance at Urban at second base. Here's the pitch. Round ball to shortstop, an easy two hopper for the satellite shortstop. Dale McGohan, so record that as a 6-3 put out. So for the Hustlers in the bottom of the second inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one runner left. After two complete innings of play today, MCC one, satellite nothing. We'd like to thank Florida Master Temp located at 3475 North Highway US-1 in Cocoa. Florida Master Temp is an authorized sales and service outlet for air conditioning systems, refrigeration equipment, ice making equipment, and machines. The office phone is answered 24 hours a day. The telephone, 321-639-3166. We'd also like to thank Al's Trophy Shop. Al's has two locations in Brevard County, one on Palm Bay Road in Palm Bay, and the other in Coco on US-1, just north of the beach line. Al's Trophy Shop creates custom plaques and trophies. They can be reached by phone at 636-6188. Once again, after the ball game this afternoon, we will be presenting a Friday Night Locker Room Player of the Game plaque made by Al's Trophy Shop last week. It was won by today's pitcher, Mark Potter. Who will it be? Today, uh, we're going to have to wait about an hour or so, hour and a half to find out. As we're set to move to the top of the third inning, it'll be Alec Eldridge, Dylan Wagner, and Dale McGohan for the Satellite Scorps. Eldridge, third baseman for the Scorps. He'll step into the batter's box, heading from the left side. This is his first plate appearance this afternoon. Mark Potter on the mound for the Hustlers. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle, call strike. No balls and one strike. Pitcher's duel shaping up between Mark Potter and Jackson Vasellis. Foul ball down the left field side, out of play. No balls and two strikes on Eldridge. Solid contact on that one, but Eldridge just a little bit late getting around on it. 0-2 pitch in the dirt. Potter tried to get him to chase one. Out of the zone, he did not. One ball and two strikes on the Scorps third baseman. Hustlers up one to nothing. They picked up a run in the bottom of the first inning. Another foul ball out of play count remains. One and two for MCC in the bottom of the first. Coleman LaRoche bunted. Nagy sacrificed him to second. Mark Potter with two outs put the ball in play to the second baseman. Unable, unable to field it cleanly was the second baseman, allowing Coleman LaRoche to easily score from third base. Swing and a miss, strike three. Eldridge goes down on strikes. Ball hits the dirt, but the catcher Smallwood picks it up immediately and tags Eldridge. 
And that'll bring up the center fielder for satellite, wearing number two, Dylan Wagner. Number of lefties this afternoon for Coach Jason Arnold. Wagner, one of the lefties. First pitch, a two hopper to the second baseman, charging and flips it over. Nice play defensively by Coleman LaRoche. It was a two hopper straight at him, but he charged it, kind of throwing across of his across his body to Nick Durgin. Got Wagner about, about four or five steps. So now they're two outs, and that'll get the Scorps back up to the top of their batting order and bring up the shortstop, number 11, Dale McGohan. McGohan 0 for 1 this afternoon. He ground out to the shortstop to start the game this afternoon. Just misses a base hit down the left field side about a foot. He ripped that one, turned on it, probably about a foot to two feet foul. So it's no balls in one strike on the Scorps shortstop. Potter gets the sign from the Smallwood, goes home with the pitch. Off-speed pitch, just a little high, evens it up at one and one. Once again, the winner of this afternoon's contest will play the winner of the Lakewood-Booker game being played tonight. And that game will be played one week from today. FHSAA really stretches out the region games this year. One week apart between the quarterfinal, semifinal, and state final. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Almost hits McGohan. He turns away from it, two balls and one strike. That one was high and tight. Jose Barris on deck for satellite. There are, however, however, two outs in the top of the third. Did he go? Umpire says, no, he did not go. So the counts run to three balls and one strike. That ball was high in the zone. McGohan does a nice job of checking, checking his swing. 3-1 pitch. Popped straight up out of play over our head, which is a good thing. So that'll run the count to three balls and two strikes. Two outs in the top of the third inning. MCC up one to nothing. Dale McGuhan awaiting the 3-2 pitch. Foul straight back, count will remain three balls and two strikes. Nice pitch by Mark Potter. Jose Barris on deck for the Scorps. He'd like to bat this inning. The Hustlers would like for him to bat next inning. Potter set to throw the 3-2 pitch. Just a little low, ball four, good at bat by Dale McGuhan. So that'll put a scorp runner on first base with two outs in the top of the third. And bring up the left fielder, number six, Jose Barris. Barris 0 for 1 this afternoon. He struck out in the first inning. Once again, Barris hits from the left side. Dale McGuhan on first base. Tyler Cameron on deck for satellite. Potter now from the stretch. First pitch misses one ball and no strikes. Barris takes a quick glance towards Jason Arnold in the third base box. Now he's back in. He set. Potter throws back over to first base, trying to keep McGuhan close. Durgin pushed the tag on him, but uh, he's already back in time. One ball, no strike pitch coming up to the left fielder for the Scorps. Satellite down, one to nothing. Another throw back to first, trying to keep McGuhan close. Jose Barris hitting in the number two slot this afternoon. Good speed shown by the left fielder for Satellite. Swing and a miss, evens it up at one ball and one strike. Now 
One ball, one strike, two outs in the top of the third inning. MCC one satellite, nothing. The Scorps with a runner on first base and the person of Dale McGuhan swinging a miss, throwing down to second base, and he is out. Christian Smallwood, what an arm, nails McGuhan trying to steal second base. So when we start the top of the fourth, Jose Barris will step back into the box. But for Satellite in the top of the third, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left on base. After two and a half innings of play this afternoon, MCC one, Satellite nothing. We'd like to thank our sponsors for supporting the Friday Night Locker Room, getting, getting us on the air. I'd normally say each and every Friday night, obviously, this is a special Tuesday afternoon edition, but uh, Space Coast Tire has always been there for us. They are an automotive repair service located at 1732 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge. Batteries, tires, brakes, oil changes, alignments, and more. The phone number, 321-639-4008. We'd also like to thank Community Bank of the South. They have three locations in Brevard, one at 277 North Sykes Creek Parkway in Merritt Island, one on State Road 524 in Cocoa, and the other at 1902 South Fisk Boulevard in Rockledge. Community Bank of the South provides personal banking, online banking, business banking, commercial and residential loans, and other service. Community Bank of the, of the South is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. The website, cbosdirect.com. Once again, I'm Steve Wilson, a special Tuesday afternoon edition of the Friday Night Locker Room, high school baseball at its finest. It's the Satellite Scorps and the MCC Hustlers, two teams that know each other extremely well. They played a number of games this year. There was a one to nothing MCC win earlier. Hustlers won 10 to nothing district finals. Satellite was up nine to nothing after an inning and a half. MCC came back, eventually won the baseball game 12 to nine. That's why they're hosting the contest this afternoon. So this is the fourth meeting between these two as Vasellis goes back to the mound, stepping in. For the Hustlers will be Jack Nagy, Christian Smallwood, and Austin Nickel. First pitch in the dirt, one ball and no strikes on Nagy. Nice pitch right down the middle by Jackson. Vasellis evens it up at one and one. We'll be doing something a little different this Friday. I'll be at Space Coast Stadium, Rockledge night, the Manatees, looking for a sellout, but our other crew will be covering a Little League baseball game in Rockledge. Coach Richard Chapman will be coaching in his 900th Little League baseball game. So the Friday night locker room will be there to cover that. There'll be a ton of people attending that Little League game. Call strike, one ball and two strikes on Nagy. But uh, that's a lot of baseball games. I coached 13 years in, in Little League. That's, that's well, maybe 250. Just off the plate evens it up in two and two, but, two and two, but Richard Chapman from Rockledge Little League will be coaching his 900th Little League baseball game this Friday. We'll, the Friday Night Locker Room will be broadcasting and carrying that game live. 2-2 two -two pitch, tried to get Nagy to chase one out of the zone. He did now, he did not, so now the count is run full to three balls and two strikes. Hustlers up one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Coleman LaRoche bunted in the first inning to lead off the bottom of the first. First ended up going all the way around. Call strike three on Nagy. Nagy. LaRoche ended up circling the bases and scoring the only run so far. So there's one out now in the bottom of the third inning. That will bring up the catcher, number 10, Christian Smallwood. Now the wind has shifted, shifted back towards right field again. So I don't know what's going on out here. It started from left field to right field. 10 minutes ago, it was blowing straight away center field, and now it's going back from left field to right field again. So, hope that doesn't mean there's something in the air coming our way. It actually doesn't look too bad now. There are some clouds. Looks like kind of north, northwest of us, but all things considered, it's not too bad. 
Christian Smallwood looks at the first pitch out of the zone, one ball and no strikes on the Hustlers catcher. Nice pitch thrown by Vassellis, evens it up at one and one. Austin Nichols on deck for the Hustlers. Smallwood 0 for 1 this afternoon. Foul tip that one, one ball and two strikes. Smallwood struck out in the first inning. Austin Nickel, the on deck batter, trots across towards the first base side, gets the foul tip, flips it to the umpire, so we're about ready to resume play here. Scoreboard shows one ball, two strikes, one out, MCC up one to nothing. Quick timeout call, Smallwood steps out of the batter's box. Does a little stretching, wants to feel just right. Now he does, he's back in. Umpire says, play ball. Nice pitch, swing and a miss. Strike three, Smallwood goes down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. That'll bring up the right fielder for MCC, where number eight, Austin Nickel. Nickel popped up to the second baseman in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1 this afternoon. Pitch by Vasellis just misses one ball and no strikes. Tried to get Nickel to chase one right off of the plate. Good back control by Austin Nickel. Could have been easy to swing at that one. He did not. Ground ball to the right field side. A two hopper to second base. Flipped over easily by Jackson Prater. So for the Hustlers in the bottom of the third inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left. After three innings of play this afternoon, MCC won, satellite nothing. We'd like to thank Custom Print Screen Printing, located at 1740 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge. Custom Prints provides textile printing products for family reunions, church gatherings, civic organizations, sports team uniforms, and business shirts. Custom Prints Office Phone, 631-3652. We'd also like to thank Barry Signs Incorporated, located at 1740 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge. They are a full-service sign company specializing in new construction, LED sales, and rentals. Special thanks to Dennis and Joanne Barry for supporting local sports. The phone number for Barry Signs, 631-6150. Barry Signs made the new signs that went up this week at Beef O'Brady's State Road 524 in Cocoa. Sean O'Reilly put it in what he's making, and he's calling the coach's corner. It's uh, one of the corners there at Beef's in Cocoa. The, the banner says... Uh, Beefo Brady, what was it? I'm trying to think. Is that Beefo Brady's Coach's Corner, sponsored by Friday Night Locker Room, and then the SpaceCoastDaily.com logo is directly below that. So it looks pretty neat. We're excited about partnering with Beefo Brady's. We've been with Sean O'Reilly for a number of years now. So it's the Friday Night Locker Room and Space Coast Daily partnering with Beefo Brady's State Road 524 in Coco. As we're set to move to the top of the fourth inning, It'll be Jose Barris, Tyler Cameron, and Kendall Karcher. Barris was in the batter's box to end the last inning. When McGohan was cut down trying to steal, he shows bunt, pulls it back. Call strike. The umpire liked it. Barris didn't particularly care for it. No balls and one strike on the Scorps left fielder. Mark Potter still on the mound. For the MCC Hustlers, that pitch low and inside evens it up at one and one. Left-handed batter in the box, Jose Barris, is 0 for 1 this afternoon. He shows bunt again, fouls it down the third base side, takes off run and then makes contact. You could tell by the bat angle, uh, it was not going to be easy to lay that one down in fair territory. So now Barris will be looking at a 1-2 pitch from Potter. Potter's ready. He's picking up the sign from Christian Smallwood. Here's the one-two pitch. Off-speed pitch. Jose Barris, nice job of just getting a piece of that one. Mark Potter took something off of that one. 
Barris did a nice job of staying back and making contact to at least live to see another pitch. One, two pitch. Once again, foul straight back. Barris just staying alive. Tyler Cameron on deck for the Scorps. Kendall Karcher in the hole. Nice afternoon. The sun is hidden behind a couple of clouds right now, which actually feels pretty nice. Quick timeout called. Barra steps out of the batter's box. Potter pretty much hasn't moved a muscle. He's peering over the top of his glove, getting the sign from Smallwood. Here's the one-two pitch. Fouls it straight back once again. Barris making Potter throw a number of pitches in this at-bat. Top of the fourth inning, MCC one, satellite nothing. Up to this point, pitcher's duel, which is pretty much we, what we expected between these two teams. Here's the one-two pitch. Misses, evens it up at two and two. Coleman LaRoche has scored the only run of this contest so far. That was in the bottom of the first inning after laying down a bunt and then advancing around one base at a time. Now, Potter fall, has fallen behind three balls and two strikes. He had Barris in a hole early. Jose Barris kept fouling him off. Now he's worked the count full. Three balls and two strikes. The payoff pitch from Mark Potter. Swing and a miss, strike three. Jose Barris goes down on strikes. Nice pitch to come back and get Barris. Third strike out of the afternoon for Mark Potter. We are in the top of the fourth inning. That'll bring up the catcher for the Scorps number 21, Tyler Cameron. Cameron was hit by a pitch in the first inning advanced no further than first base. As Karcher flew out to left field to end the inning, first pitch to Tyler Cameron, call strike, no balls and one strike. Kendall Karcher swinging the bat on deck for the Scorps. Pitch by Potter, swing and a miss, quickly no balls and two strikes on Cameron. Game moving right along. I show 447. We started at 359. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Less than an hour. Tried to get Cameron to chase one off the plate. He did not. One ball and two strikes. That one missed just by a few inches off the plate. Potter set to throw the one-two pitch. Breaking ball right in there, call strike three. Consecutive strikeouts in the top of the fourth inning for Mark Potter. And that'll bring up this afternoon's designated hitter for the Scorps, number 14, Kendall Karcher. Karcher's 0 for 1 this afternoon. He flew out to the left fielder to end the first inning. Potter appears to be in a groove. Nice pitch, call, strike, no balls, and one strike. Trey Rich on deck for the Scorps. There are two outs in the top of the fourth inning. Foul ball down the third base side, just a couple of feet to the right of head coach Jason Arnold, who's in the third base box. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The number four batter for the Scorps hitting from the right side. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch, breaking ball just misses. I mean, just misses. One ball and two strikes. Karcher steps out, steps back in. I think he feels he was fortunate to not have that call go against him. Ground ball foul down the third base side, a dribbler towards the third base side. The count will remain one ball and two strikes on Kendall Karcher. He'll stroll back to home plate.
Now the wind has shifted back around again. It's the flags drifting, showing straight out at center field. So it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. One, two pitch. Pop up, foul territory. First baseman might have a shot at it, and he does. Nick Durgin camps under it as Karcher fouls out in, into foul territory. So for the satellite scorps in the top of inning number four, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left. After three and a half innings of play this afternoon, the score remains MCC one and satellite nothing. Talked a little bit about uh, Rockledge Night at Space Coast Stadium. Let's talk about a Memorial Day ceremony coming up the end of this month. That'll be on Sunday, May 29th, actually the day before Memorial Day. It'll be Sunday, May 29th at 2 p.m. at Larry Schultz Park in Rockledge. That's at the intersection of Fisk Boulevard and Levitt Parkway. It's, uh, it'll be about a one-hour ceremony to honor those that uh, paid the ultimate price sacrificing for this nation. It's uh, an incredibly moving ceremony. It was held last year in McClarty Park. There'll be a number of speakers. We do know that Sheriff Wayne Ivey will be attending and speaking. Uh, Port Commissioner, retired Rear Admiral Wayne Justice will be speaking. We're in conversation with Patrick Air Force, Air Force Base. We'll have one to two speakers from the Patrick Air Force Base locally. So it's gonna be uh, just a nice ceremony. Uh, music speakers will a, le a wreath laying ceremony towards the end at about 2.50. So that's Sunday, May 29th in Rockledge at Larry Schultz Park, which is at the corner of Fisk Boulevard and Levitt Parkway. We hope you can attend. As we're set to move to the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Mark Potter, S.P. Perry, and Will Erdman. Potter reached first base in the first inning on an error when the second baseman was unable to field the baseball. During that play, Coleman LaRoche scored from third base. All of this occurred with two outs. It's the one and only run in this baseball game. Quickly, Potter looks at two strikes, no balls, and two strikes. He's 0 for 1 this afternoon. Potter swings from the right side. He throws from the right side. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Is popped up. Short stop, center field, short stop, center field. Looks like center fielder is going to charge in almost to the dirt, to the clay to record the out. Good hustle. Center fielder Dylan Wagner ran a long way to record that out. So now there's one out, nobody on. That'll bring up the left fielder for MCC, number 23, S.P. Perry. Perry 0 for 1 this afternoon. He ground back to the pitcher to end the first inning. Perry hitting from the left side, one ball and no strikes. That one just misses as well. Two balls and no strikes on Perry. Perry played terrific defense last week against McKeel Academy out in left field. All around solid baseball player. player. That one finds the corner, two balls and one strike on Perry. Will Urban on deck for the Hustlers. Vasellis set to throw the 2-1 pitch. Ground ball, base hit between the shortstop and the third baseman. So SP Perry records the first base hit of this baseball game. And that'll bring up the MCC Hustlers center fielder, number six, Will Erdman. MCC up one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. This is a regulation seven inning baseball game. The winner will play the winner of the Lakewood Booker game that'll be played later tonight. First pitch to Erdman is in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Jackson Vassell snap throw back to first base. Trying to catch Perry off of first base. Not a problem for number 23 to get back. Once again, Vassell from the stretch. 
Goes home with the pitch to Erdman. Just inside, two balls and no strikes to Will Erdman. Erdman hits from the right side, S.P. Perry. Runner on first base, one out in the bottom of the fourth inning, MCC one, satellite nothing. Shows bunt, pulls it back, finds the zone, two balls and one strike. Coach Tom Dooley's squad, 28 and one on the year. Throw to first base, getting back rather easily as S.P. Perry. You win 28 out of 29 games, you're gonna come into any baseball game with a lot of confidence. They've beaten this thing, this team three times. Swing and a miss, almost catching Perry off of first base. The throw, snap throw from the catcher was just a little wide. Had it been a little better throw, they've got SP Perry easily at first base, but he is able to get back. Two balls, two strikes on Erdman, one out, runner on first. Jackson Vasellis looking in to get the sign from Tyler Cameron. From the stretch, he's going to go home with the plate. Breaking ball, Urban just gets a piece of that one, tips it straight back. Count will remain even at two and two. Hustlers would love to pick up another run. They're only up by a score of one to nothing. A lot of baseball yet to be played in this game. 2-2 two -two pitch, call strike three on the inside. Erdman looks at strike three, so now there's two outs in the bottom of the fourth. That'll bring up this afternoon's designated hitter for the Hustlers, number 24, Jackson Taylor. Taylor had a sacrifice bunt in the second inning, a little blooper towards second baseman, fielded cleanly, fired over to first base. Nice play by Jackson Prater, the second baseman for the Scorps. The ball went over the head of the pitcher. Prater charged it, fielded it once again, threw across his body to first baseman Trey Rich to record the third out in the fourth inning. So for the Hustlers in the bottom of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left. After four innings of play this afternoon, MCC won, satellite, nothing. Talking about the Memorial Day ceremony set to come uh, to come to Rockledge, Larry Schultz Park, May 29th, Sunday. It's the day before Memorial Day, and they do that so as not to conflict with other events. I know there's some parades that will be held on May 30th, Memorial Day, but it's a, a real unique uh, program that the city of Rockledge has put together and we hope everyone out there uh, can make plans to attend. We would like to thank Jimmy's Restaurant located in Rockledge at 1279 Admiralty Boulevard next to Turtle Creek Golf Club and there's also a Jimmy's on US 1 in the Port St. John area. So Jimmy's Restaurant now has two locations to serve you. How about DeCandio and Associates Allstate Insurance? They've been with the Friday Night Locker Room for about four months now. They have two locations in Brevard County, one in Port St. John at 950 Fay Boulevard, and the other one's in Mims at 3239 North Highway US 1. For auto, home, life investments, disability, plus boats, motorcycles, four-wheelers, or renter's insurance, Jennifer DeCandio, Agency Principal and Associates, Allstate Insurance. As we're set to move to the top of the fifth inning for the satellite Scorps, it'll be Trey Rich, Jackson Prater, and Chet Moore. MCC one, satellite nothing. Pitcher's duel extraordinaire. Call strike on Trey Rich. The Hustlers have recorded one base hit. The Scorps have yet to record a base hit this afternoon. Pitch by Potter, fouled out of play down the third base side. No balls and two strikes on Trey Rich. No, I can talk about a no-hitter. I'm not, I'm not gonna jinx anybody. Hey, it's radio, if I don't say anything, you're not gonna know. So Mark Potter throwing the ball extremely well, like he did last week. 
He was just about ready to let it fly. Trey Rich called a quick timeout. Steps out of the box. No balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Top of the fifth inning, Hustlers up one to nothing. Winner advances, loser's season comes to an end. Off-speed pitch, call strike three, broke right into the zone. Trey Rich goes down on strikes. That'll bring up the Scorps second baseman, number three, Jackson Prater. Prater 0 for 1 this afternoon. He ground out to the shortstop in the second inning. He'll step in from the right side. Potter gets the sign from Smallwood. Swing and a miss strike, no balls, and one strike. Strong wind once again blowing to straightaway center field. Outfield shaded a little bit to the right infield at about normal depth. Showing bunt, pulling it back, ball is low. Evens it up at one ball and one strike. Chet Moore on deck for Jason Arnold's satellite scorps. Scorps won their region final game last week. Off-speed pitch in the dirt, two balls and one strike. Good crowd on hand, both from MCC, the home team, and from Satellite. Satellite Beach, not too far away, so a nice crowd when you combine the two. Pop straight up, center field charging. Will Erdman in control in center field, drifts about 20 feet to his right, makes the catch. So Prater flies out to Erdman for the second out. That'll bring up the right fielder, number eight, Chet Moore. Moore's 0 for 1 this afternoon. He flew out to Austin Nickel in right field to end the second inning. Mark Potter with the baseball in his hand. Moore set to step in, now steps out, has a, a quick word with the home plate umpire. Moore takes a look at Coach Arnold in the third base box. He steps in, now we're ready to get this game back underway. Here's the first pitch. Call strike, no balls in one strike, a fastball in the corner thrown by Mark Potter. Moore hitting in the number seven slot this afternoon for the Scorps. Outfield has shifted to their right, so they're pretty much playing straight up. Ground ball back to Mark Potter, snags it, flips it underhand to the first baseman, record that as a 1-3 put out. Nice grab by Mark Potter, the ball was well hit. But for the Scorps in the top of the fifth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and no runners left. After four and a half innings of play this afternoon, the score remains MCC one, satellite nothing. We would like to thank our title sponsor, Mike Urban Nissan Cadillac. The dealership is located on the 520 Causeway, Merritt Island. They are an authorized sales and service outlet for new Nissan and Cadillac products, and they carry a line of used cars and trucks. The website, MikeUrbanMotors.com, the telephone, 453 Two zero five zero. Mike Erdman, the sales team and service crew are community minded, bringing this afternoon's game to the public over this station. And this station is SpaceCoastDaily.com. Tom Palermo, Giles Malone, Zach Clark, Allison Malone, Dr. Jim Palermo, the whole crew at Space Coast Daily knows what they're doing. They put things together nicely and speaking of putting things together nicely. There's a lot going on the next week and a half. Uh, a week from this Friday, which will be the 13th in the morning, Space Coast Daily Brevard Productions will be recognizing the top athletes, both male and female in Brevard County at the Breakfast of Champions at the Cocoa Beach Country Club. And then that night, it'll be the Space Coast Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's not too late to get tickets to that. You're talking about some of the elites in Brevard County from sporting standpoint uh, will be inducted Friday night 
the 13th. Go to eventbrite.com, eventbrite.com. Type in Space Coast Sports Hall of Fame. Purchase your tickets. It's going to be an incredible evening at the Cocoa Beach Country Club. You're starting. We're starting to see a lot of video tributes online at spacecoastdaily.com. So really looking forward to that a week from this Friday as the Hustler is about ready to get things going in the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Ryan Coscarello, Coleman LaRoche, and Jack Nagy. Coscarello looks at the first pitch inside. Second pitch evens it up at one ball and one strike. MCC one. Satellite scores nothing in this pitcher's duel between Mark Potter of the Hustlers and Jackson Vasellas of the Scorps. Ground ball looks like a two hopper to second base. Easy play defensively for the second baseman, Jackson Prater. So quickly one up and one down in the bottom of the fifth inning. That'll get the Hustlers back to the top of their batting order and bring up second baseman number 15, Coleman LaRoche. LaRoche 0 for 1 this afternoon. He walked and scored. Shows bunt. He went after it. He missed it. Call strike. No balls and one strike. LaRoche bunted. He ended up scoring the only run of this baseball game in the first inning. He ground out to the second base, excuse me, to the shortstop in the second inning. One ball, one strike, one out. Coleman LaRoche from the right side swings through that one. One ball and two strikes. I know Coach Dooley would like a few more runs. One run's kind of scary. I don't care how well Mark Potter is throwing. A one-run lead is uh, can be nerve-wracking, that ball high and tight over the head of Coleman LaRoche. Evens it up at two and two. Quick timeout call by the pitcher for satellite, Jackson Vasellis. Goes behind the mound to tie his shoe. He's got to get comfortable and set. Looks like he's ready now. Pitch breaking ball, trying to get LaRoche to chase one out of the zone. He did not. Has run the count full, three balls and two strikes. One out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Payoff pitch. Just misses ball four. Coleman LaRoche will walk for the second time this afternoon. So that'll put a Scorps run, excuse me, a Hustlers runner on first with one out in the bottom of the fifth. MCC up by one, one to nothing, and bring up shortstop number five, Jack Nagy. Nagy. Sacrifice bunt in the first inning. Called out on strikes in the third inning. First pitch low and away, one ball and no strikes to the Hustlers shortstop. Jackson Vasellis, here's the pitch. Nice pitch inside corner, evens it up at one and one. Vasellis throwing the ball extremely well, has only allowed one base hit this afternoon, and that's a single in the last inning to S.P. Perry. Pot Potter has countered that pitching effort by allowing no hits through five innings this afternoon. Jack Nagy goes after that one, one ball and two strikes. Tom Dooley, head coach of the Hustlers in the third base box, trying to get him to chase one outside. Almost did, but he checked his swing. Evens it up at two and two. Scorps in all red this afternoon. Red pants, red tops, red and white hats. Pants are trimmed in, in white. The numbers are white. MCC, of course, in their, their home white pinstripe uniforms, trimmed in green. That pitch low and away has run the count full. Three balls and two strikes on the number two batter for the MCC Hustlers. Nagy steps back in. Vasellis gets the sign from Tyler Cameron. Timeout called by Jack Nagy. He steps out of the bat batter's box. 
Vassalis takes a quick look into the dugout in the first base side. That's his his squad on the first base side, MCC on the third base side. Ball four low, it will now put Hustlers on first and second with only one out. Back-to-back -back walks by LaRoche and Nagy. Timeout called by Jason Arnold. He's gonna take a slow stroll to the pitcher's mound. The entire infield and the catcher, Tyler Cameron, will meet on the mound. So this timeout is brought to you by Beef O'Brady's State Road 524 in Cocoa. Sean O'Reilly and the whole gang of beefs have always been big supporters of local sports, so the tie-in with a Friday night locker room is a natural. The menu includes chicken, steak, and fish taco baskets, and of course, wings. Thanks to Sean O'Reilly, Timmy O'Reilly, Beef O'Brady's State Road 524 in Cocoa. We'd also like to thank Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office. They provide representation for members of the public who have suffered head trauma or brain or spinal cord injury. Knutson Brain Spine Injury Law Office is located in Rockledge at 830 Executive Lane, Suite 140. The phone number for Jim Knutson, 632-2722. Timeout breaks, breaks up as the home plate umpire heads toward the, towards the pitcher's mound and said, all right, it's time to play ball. So now MCC with runners on first and second, one out, bottom of the fifth inning, leading this region semifinal game by a score of one to nothing. The number three batter for MCC, Christian Smallwood, set to step into the box. First pitch fouled out of play down the right field side, no balls in one strike on Christian Smallwood. Smallwood is 0 for 2 this afternoon. He struck out twice. Vassalis has had his number up to this point. Smallwood's a good one, though. You're not going to keep him down all day long. Pitch by Vassalis. Just misses inside, evens it up at 1 and 1. Coach Dooley would love to add to this one run lead. We are on the bottom of the fifth inning. Vassellis gets the sign from Cameron. Breaking for third is Erdman. Just gets a piece of that one. So Smallwood just gets a piece of it. Excuse me, that was uh, LaRoche easily had it stolen at third, but he's gonna have to, have to walk back to second base. Scoreboard shows one ball, two strikes, one out. Runners on first and second. Christian Smallwood in the batter's box, awaiting the pitch from Jackson Vasellis. Just off the plate, evens it up in two and two. Check swing by Smallwood. Nice job of holding up. You've got two strikes on you. Anything close, you got to go after. That ball looked like it was going to hug the corner. The breaking ball took it outside. Nice job by Christian Smallwood to lay off of that pitch. Two-two pitch. Low just misses. Vassellis wanted that one big time. He goes to his knees. Didn't work. So now the count has run full. Three balls and two strikes. Back-to-back -back walks. It put LaRoche and Nagy on first and second. Payoff pitch set for Christian Smallwood, still only one out. Austin Nickel on deck for the Hustlers. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Actually hits him, it's clips his shirt. It was gonna be ball four or hit by pitch regardless. Smallwood now on first base, Nagy on second, LaRoche on third. The Hustlers can do some damage now. Leading this game by one, they have Austin Nickel and Mark Potter set to come to the plate. Two of the big sticks for Coach Tom Dooley's MCC Hustlers. Austin Nickel 0 for 2 this afternoon. He popped up to the second baseman in the first inning. He ground out to the second baseman in the third inning. That first pitch on the corner, no balls and one strike. Nice pitch by Jackson Vasellis. That would have been a tough one to make contact with. It was low in the zone right at the corner. 
Swing and a miss. Strike two. So quickly, Vasellas in control. No balls and two strikes. Base is full of hustlers. Nowhere to go, MCC up by one. Bottom of the fifth inning, trying to add to this lead. Here's the pitch. Fouled right field. It might be deep enough for a sack. Tagging, faking the, th faking the run home. Nice throw by the right fielder, Chet Moore. Wasn't quite deep enough to send Coleman LaRoche. So now there's two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Base is still full of hustlers, and that'll bring up the MCC pitcher, number 16, Mark Potter. Potter reached on, the, on an error in the first inning. At that time, the only run of the ball game scored when Coleman LaRoche came home from third. Potter flew out to center field, his second plate appearance. Now nowhere to put the big guy, Jackson Vasellis. Throws one low and away in the dirt. Nice stop by the catcher, Tyler Cameron. He goes to his knees, shifts to the right, blocks that ball just like he's taught. Had it gotten past him, it's two to nothing. Coleman LaRoche with good speed on third would have scored easily. So the count shows one ball and no strike on Mark Potter. Potter now steps back into the batter's box. Pitcher versus pitcher. Hard hit. Shortstop unable to field it. One run will score. Two runs will score. And the Hustlers are now leading this baseball game by a score of three to nothing. It was a hard hit ball to the left of the shortstop. Took kind of a funny hop. Unable to field it was Dylan McGohan. So now all of a sudden it's jumped from a one to nothing lead to a three to nothing lead. Potter's gonna take a seat. Looks like uh, maybe Mike Ridyard will be courtesy runner at first base. Now the Hustlers with runners on first and second, still two out. LaRoche scored and Nagy scored. Call strike thrown to SP Perry. MCC three satellite, nothing. This is a regional semifinal game. The winner will play a week from today in a regional region final contest against the winner of the Lakewood Booker game. The loser, unfortunately for them, their season comes to an end. No balls and two strikes on SP Perry. Pitch by Vasellis, swing and a miss. Strike three, SP Perry goes down on strikes. But for the Hustlers in the bottom of the fifth inning, they come up with two runs, one hit, no errors, and two runners left. After five complete innings of play this afternoon, MCC three, satellite nothing. Whether to record that last one as a base hit or an error was, was close. It was hit right at him, maybe a foot or two to his left. It was hit hard. Uh, had he fielded it, that's one of those 50-50 plays. Uh, regardless, we're going to score it as a base hit and a couple of RBIs for Mark Potter. MCC will carry a three to nothing lead into the top of the sixth inning. Still a lot of baseball to be played, but Potter's looking sharp on the mound. I'm not gonna say you're gonna breathe more comfortable, but you have to, if you're Tom Dooley, like a three to nothing lead, a little better than a one to nothing lead. Of course, that goes without saying. But uh, we would like to thank once again, the sponsors of the Friday Night Locker Room. Those are the folks that allow us to do what we do throughout the course of the season. Years ago, the Friday Night Locker Room started broadcasting high school football only. We did that for a couple of years, and then our sponsor said, uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about doing basketball? Did basketball, and they said, what do you think about doing baseball and softball? Did baseball and softball, and that ended, and they said, what do you think about just picking up odds and ends during the summer? You know, softball, baseball, little league, travel ball, uh, we've done some interesting things, boxing matches, you name it. Uh, and we've done it during the summer when school's out. So now the Friday night locker room goes year-round, 12 months out of the year. We normally take a couple of weekends off, but not too many. More often than not, especially when we get back into a rhythm during football season, it's every Friday night at 7. Baseball, softball, basketball, a lot of the postseason games are like they are tonight. Weekday, so our schedule is a little more erratic, but... Uh, we're set to move to the top of the sixth inning. MCC's up by three over the Satellite Scorps. 
It'll be Alec Eldridge, Dylan Wagner, and Dale McGuhan. Eldridge 0 for 1 this afternoon. He struck out in the third inning. A couple of balls thrown by Mark Potter. Two balls and no strikes on the Scorps third baseman. Satellite doesn't need all three runs this inning. They just need to chip away. They would love to pick up a run, maybe two runs here in the sixth. But they need to make something happen, put the ball in play. Mark Potter has been on really since the first pitch of this game. He's thrown the ball extremely well. That pitch is in the zone two and one. Foul ball out of play down the left field line, evens it up at two balls and two strikes. Left-handed hitting Alec Eldridge. Backs out, takes a couple of practice swings. Black bat handle, a gold bat. Gold aluminum bat, 2-2 two -two pitch from Potter. Just missed his low, has run the count full, three balls and two strikes. Eldridge hitting in the number eight slot for Coach Jason Arnold Scorp. So it'll be the eight, nine, and one batter here in the top of the sixth inning. One hopper knocked down by the third baseman, flipped over to shortstop. Infield hit by Alec Eldridge. Ball hit to the third baseman, Coscarella, unable to come up with the ball. It tipped off of his glove to the shortstop, Jack Nagy. But by the time he picked up the ball, there was no way he was going to get Alec Eldridge out. So now the Scorps have a runner on first, nobody out, top of the sixth inning. And that'll bring up the number nine batter, center fielder number two, Dylan Wagner. Wagner grounded out to the second baseman. In the third inning, ball gets away from Small with the catcher. Advancing easily to second base is Alec Eldridge. So now the Scorps with a runner on second. For the first time this afternoon, Coach Tom Dooley of the Hustlers calls timeout to talk to the infield, to talk to his pitcher, talk to his catcher. Make sure they're all on the same page. A big two innings coming up. The winner of this afternoon's contest once again will advance to play in region final action a week from today. MCC currently enjoying a 3 to nothing lead over Satellite, but we are in the top of the sixth. The Scorps have a runner on first and nobody out. And Dylan Wagner, the number nine batter, set to step in and swing the bat from the left side. Mark Potter appears into Smallwood, gets the sign. He'll be going from the stretch. Low and away ball. Two, two balls and no strikes on Wagner. These two teams know each other well, Satellite and MCC. Call strike, two balls and one strike. That one just caught the corner. Both class 5A high schools, MCC defeated Satellite 12 to 9 for the district championship, which is why we're playing at MCC this afternoon. That plus the fact they both their, won their region quarterfinal game last Tuesday. Three balls and one strike. All of a sudden, the Scorps are one pitch away from bringing up the potential tying run to home plate. Dylan Wagner set for the 3-1 pitch. Mark Potter from the stretch. He'll go home. Line drive, base hit to left field. Coach Arnold is going to hold up the runner at third base. So now the Scorps will have runners on the corners. Still nobody out in the top of the sixth. Back-to-back -back base hits by Eldridge and Wagner. We'll get the Scorps back to the top of their batting order and bring up the shortstop, number 11, Dale McGuhan. McGuhan 0 for 1 this afternoon. He ground out to the shortstop to lead off the baseball game. He walked in the third inning and was caught stealing to end that half inning. So now Potter is going to have to work himself out of a jam, his opponents, the Scorps with runners on the corners, nobody out, MCC up by three. 
First pitch ground to third base fielded cleanly. Six, four, stay safe at first. Scoring from third base is Alec Eldridge. So good play, you're up by three. Goyden concede the run. He was going for the double play, got the leading base runner, Wagner. So reaching on a fielder's choice will be Dale McGuhan. Scorps score their first run of the game. So now, now they're down three to one to MCC. Still have a runner on first in the person of Dale McGuhan. And that'll bring up the left fielder, number six, Jose Barris. Look like a possibility of a 5-4-3 double play. The speed of McGuhan disallowed that. Foul ball straight back. No balls in one strike. Hustlers can catch their breath just a little bit. They've allowed one run, but now they have a runner on first base, not yet in scoring position. Mark Potter still throwing the ball well for the Hustlers. He takes a glance towards first base throw over to first base trying to get McGuhan, who slides head first safely back into the bag. No balls, one strike on Jose Barris. Had a terrific at bat his last time up, although he ended up striking out. Fouled off a lot of pitches. Speaking of fouls, he fouls this one out of play. So now Barris in a hole, no balls and two strikes. Tyler Cameron is on deck for satellite. Bear swings the bat from the left side. He steps back into the box. Potter gets the sign from Smallwood. Smallwood sets up outside, hits the target, but he sets his glove about a foot off of the plate. Perfect pitch by Potter. Barris did not chase it. So he'll be looking at a one-two pitch from Mark Potter. Still only one out in the top of the sixth, MCC three, satellite one in this region semifinal contest. Throw back to first base, not really close. Potter on that throw, just trying to keep McGuhan close. Wasn't necessarily trying to pick him off on that, on that throw. Potter set. He's going to go home with the pitch. It's high and away. Evens it up at two and two. Talked at the outset of this inning. Satellite didn't need three runs this inning. If they could pick up a run, maybe two, they could position themselves to do something in the seventh inning. Well, they got their one run, and they still have a run on first and only one out. Pitch by Potter. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Jose Barris goes down on strikes for the third time this afternoon. As that'll bring up the catcher for the Scorps, number 21, Tyler Cameron. Cameron was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Was called out on strikes in the fourth inning. Cameron hitting from the right side. Scorps with a runner on first, two outs, first pitch, a one hopper, a short hopper to the second base. Nice play defensively by the second baseman, Coleman LaRoche. It was a one hopper, but it hit about six feet in front of him. The ball was hit well by Cameron. He records the out, credited it, recorded as a 4-3 put out. Nice play defensively by the Hustlers. So for the satellite Scorps in the top of the sixth inning, they come up with one run on two hits. No errors and one runner left. After five and a half innings of play this afternoon, MCC three, satellite one. We'd like to once again thank the sponsors for this afternoon's baseball game. Florida Master Temp located at 3475 North Highway US 1 in Coco. Florida Master Temp is an authorized sales and service outlet for air conditioning systems, refrigeration equipment, ice making equipment and machines. The office phone is answered 24 hours a day. That's area code 321-639-3166. Area code 321-639-3166. Tommy Eberhardt and company know how to do things right. They're situated just north of the beach line in Cocoa 
on US-1. Some of the good guys in Brevard County, that's the Eberharts. We'd also like to thank Al's Trophy Shop, two Brevard County locations, one on Palm Bay Road in Palm Bay, and the other on Coco on US-1 just north of the Beach Line. Al's Trophy Shop creates custom plaques and trophies. They can be reached by phone at 636-6188. Speaking of custom plaques, we will be presenting our Friday night locker room player of the game plaque to someone after this game. Don't know who yet. Don't know if it'll be a hustler or a scorp. But we will be making the presentation. We'll be posting it online. You'll see it on our Facebook page. Just type in Friday night locker room. You'll see a picture of the Friday night locker room player of the game from today's game, whoever it may be. As we're set to move to the bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be Will Erdman, Jackson Taylor, and Ryan Coscarello. Erdman 0 for 1 this afternoon. He walked in the second inning, reached as far as second base. He was called out on strikes in the fourth inning. Erdman looks at the first pitch inside, one ball and no strikes. Quickly, two balls and no strikes on Erdman. Jackson Vasella still on the mound for the Scorps. Has thrown the ball well, as has his counterpart, Mark Potter of the MCC Hustlers, called strike. Two balls and one strike on Erdman. Erdman set to look at a 2 1 pitch, squares to bunt. Down third base line, a great bunt. They're never going to get Will Erdman. Credit him with an infield hit to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. A beautifully placed bunt right down the third base line, about halfway between home plate and third base. Third baseman Alec Eldridge did everything he could charging the baseball, but the speed of Will Erdman, there was no way they were going to get the senior wear number six. So once again, Jason Arnold calls timeout. Looks like they are going to make a pitching change. He shows his right hand. He wants a, a right arm thrower as Jackson Vasellis is going to come out of the game. He threw a terrific game this afternoon. He's going to leave with his squad down 3-1 to one and a runner on first base. So we'll uh, pick up the new pitcher. For the Satellite Scorps, we'll take a short break and thank some of the sponsors that allow us to do what we do, not only each and every Friday night, but each and every Tuesday afternoon that we're on the air. Jackson Vasellis gets a nice hand both from the Satellite crowd and the MCC crowd. A lot of class on both sides of the field. We would like to thank Community Bank of the South. As you know, they have three locations. One at 277 North Sykes Creek Parkway in Merritt Island. One at State Road 524 in Cocoa. And the other at 1902 South Fisk Boulevard in Rockledge. Community Bank of the South provides personal banking, online banking, business banking, commercial and residential loans, and other service. Community Bank of the South is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. The website, cbosdirect.com. Looks like Nick Burt, wearing number 15, will now enter the game in place of Jackson Vasellis on the mound. So that's Nick Burt will be your pitcher for the Satellite Scorps. We'd also like to thank DeCandy on Associates Allstate Insurance. They have two locations, one in Port St. John at 950 Fay Boulevard and the other in Mims at 3239 North Highway US-1. For auto, home, life investments, disability, plus boats, motorcycles, four-wheelers, or renter's insurance, Jennifer DeCandio Agency Principal and Associates, Allstate Insurance. How about Jimmy's Restaurant with two locations? One, 1279 Admiralty Boulevard has been in Rockledge for many years, right next to Turtle Creek Golf Club, but Jimmy's just opened another branch, another restaurant, on US-1 in Port St. John. That's Jimmy's Restaurant US-1 in Port St. John. Nick Burt has just about taken his last warm-up toss and that will bring Jackson Taylor up into the batter's box hitting from the left side, MCC3, 
Satellite won in this region semifinal contest. Bottom of the sixth inning, Will Erdman, base runner on first for the Hustlers, nobody out. Coach Dooley wants more. He's not satisfied with a three to one lead, primarily because the Satellite Scorps can hit the baseball and he knows they can hit the baseball. Showing bunt, pulling it back. Erdman gets off at first base, but he gets back fairly close. Nice throw down by T Tyler Cameron. Urban gets back safely by about a half a foot. He's going to walk off. Uh, I'm not going to call it an injury, but he came back hard. Coach Dooley's going to run down to first base to check on his center fielder to make sure he's okay. Taylor showed bunt, pulled it back. The pitch was out of the zone, so it's one ball and no strikes to the number eight batter in the lineup for the Hustlers, designated hitter Jackson Taylor. See, Dooley's checking to make sure that Coach Dooley's checking to make sure Will Erdman is okay. Looks like Erdman might come out of the game. He's running across the diamond towards the third base dugout. Let's see if they're going to make a change. Anyway, while they're figuring things out, we'd like to thank once again Custom Prints, screen printing located at 1740 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge. They provide textile printing products for family reunions, church gatherings, civic organizations, sports team uniforms, and business shirts. Custom Prints Office phone, 631-3652. That's Custom Prints screen printing at 631-3652. And right next door to Custom Prints, Barry Signs Incorporated. They're located 1740 South Huntington Lane in Rockledge, they are a full-service sign company specializing in new construction, LED sales, and rentals. Special thanks, excuse me, special thanks to Dennis and Joanne Berry for supporting local sports. The phone number, 321-631-6150. That's area code 321-631-6150. Breaking the action as uh, Jackson Taylor showed Bunny, pulled it back. The ball was low. Snap throw to first base, trying to pick off Will Erdman at first base. He dove head first back into the bag. Erdman has run across the diamond, disappeared into the third base dugout or behind it, so we don't know whether they're going to make a change or he's making adjustments of some sort. Regard regardless, it's MCC 3, Satellite 1. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The winner of this game will advance to region final play against the winner of the Lakewood Booker game. Coleman LaRoche has scored two of the three runs this afternoon for the Hustlers. No base hits. But he's walked twice and ended up scoring twice. So Will Erdman trots back onto the field. He's fine. He's going to be running at first base. Umpire's going to take a look at his hand. Look like maybe he bandaged his first hand. For, uh, his first hand. <laughs> his right hand. They are ready to go. First baseman Trey Rich of the Scorps gives Erdman five. So we're just about ready to resume play here. Will Erdman beat out a, a base hit. He laid a bunt down. He laid down a bunt. That's how he got at first base. Jackson Taylor, the designated hitter, just about set to step into the batter's box. One ball and no strikes. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. Sacrifice bunt earlier by Jackson Taylor. Throw back to first base. Erdman back standing up. Jackson Taylor grounded out to second base in the fourth inning. Taylor hitting from the left side. He's awaiting the pitch. He's going to show bunt. He bunts it back to the pitcher. It's going to be a nice one. It'll advance Erdman to second base. Once again, the second Sacrifice bunt by Jackson Taylor in this game. It's the little things that advance you to the next round. Now Will Erdman standing on second with one out in the bottom of the sixth. And that'll bring up the Hustlers third baseman, number seven, Ryan Coscarella. Coleman LaRoche will be on deck. Coscarella 0 for 2 this afternoon. 
He struck out in the second inning. Foul ball down to the right field line, chasing it as hard as he can as the right fielder. It's going to fall to the ground. Good effort, good hustle by Chet Moore, the right fielder for the Scorps. A long strike hits the ground. Coscarello grounded out to second in the fifth inning. We are in the bottom of the sixth inning, MCC three, satellite one with a runner on second base. Coscarello set for the 0-1 pitch. The right-handed throwing Nick Burke. That pitch is high, evens it up at one and one. One's across the top of the scoreboard. One ball, one strike, one out. The guest has one. The guests are the Scorps. The home team, the Hustlers, have three. Ground ball to shortstop. Bobbled by the shortstop. Everybody's safe now. Runners on the corner. Shortstop McGillian unable to come up with that one. Coscarella now standing on first. Will Erdman on third. Jason Arnold's going to make a slow walk once again to the mound. This slow walk is brought to you by Mike Erdman Nissan Cadillac. Mike Urban Nissan Cadillac is located on the 520 Causeway, Merritt Island. They are an authorized sales and service outlet for new Nissan and Cadillac products, and they carry a line of used cars and trucks. The website, MikeUrbanMotors.com. The telephone, area code 321-453-2050. That's area code 321-453-2050. We'd like to thank SpaceCoastDaily.com. They're the ones that get us on the air. Each and every broadcast, Tom Palermo, Giles Malone, Zach Clark, Allison Malone, Dr. Jim Palermo, they do it all at SpaceCoastDaily.com. Check them out for all the top news and sports, not only in Brevard County, the state of Florida, but around the world. SpaceCoastDaily.com does it all. Coach Arnold makes his way back to the first base box. We're about ready to resume play. Runners on the corners for the Scorps. They're up three to one. One out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Coleman LaRoche steps into the batter's box, throw over to first base, trying to catch Coscarello off of the bag. They did not. LaRoche 0 for 1, but he's walked twice and scored twice. Coleman LaRoche hitting from the right side. Jack Nagy on deck. The little, uh, what do they call them? No CMs. The little bugs are starting to come out. Breaking ball thrown by Nick Burt. Drops right in there. No balls and one strike. Nice pitch by number 15. Burt throwing from the right side. Gets the sign from Tyler Cameron. The catcher goes home with the pitch. That's high. And I mean real high, one ball and one strike. Hustlers up by two, three to one. They'd love to tack on a run or two to breathe just a little more comfortably as we head to the seventh inning. The first things first, there's only one out in the bottom of the sixth, MCC trying to do a little more damage. Snap throw back safely at first base is Ryan Coscarello. Trey Rich puts the tag on him, but uh, not real close. Burke set to throw the 1-1 pitch, squaring to bunt, pushes it down the first baseline. That's going to score one run, and it might beat out, and it does. You have to credit LaRoche with an infield hit. Nobody covered first base on time, so give Coleman LaRoche an RBI, a bunt single. And he's on base for the third time this afternoon. Will Erdman scores easily from third base. Ron, Ryan Coscarello advances to second base. Erdman scores the fourth run of the game for the Hustlers. It's MCC four, satellite one. So the Hustlers got back that run they gave up in the top of the sixth inning. Nick Burt from the stretch. 
dead ball. I thought it hit. I thought it hit the batter, but I. I think they're going to say it hit the bat. Looks like there will be runners on first and second. Shows no balls in one strike. I thought it hit his helmet. It must have hit his bat. So Jack Nagy will step back into the box. Had a sacrifice bunt in the first inning. He was called out on strikes in the third inning. He walked and scored the third run last inning. Nagy will look at an 0-1 pitch, one out, runners on first and second, trying to pick him off at second, throws the ball into center field. Good backup by the center fielder, Dylan Wagner, not allowing the base runner, Ryan Coscarella, to advance to third. So the runners for the Scorps will stay right where they are. Excuse me, the runners for the Hustlers will stay right where they are. Runners on first and second, one out, bottom of the sixth. MCC up four to one. Pitch to Nagy's foul back towards the right field, or the first base side rather. No balls and two strikes on the Hustlers shortstop. Nagy swings the bat from the right side. Nick Burt in relief of Jackson Vasellis on the mound. Timeout called by Nagy. He thinks Burt, takes it. Burt took just a little bit too long. There are other region semifinal games around the county. Port St. Lucie will be visiting Rockledge tonight. Melbourne will be visiting Vieira. That ball inside, one ball and two strikes. So we know we're going to have at least two teams playing next Tuesday. The winner of the Vieira Melbourne game will play. The winner of this game, the MCC Satellite game, will play. So we're going to have at least two local teams playing in region, region final action. If the Raiders come out on top of Port St. Lucie, then we'll have three region final games involving Brevard County teams next week. That pitch high and inside evens it up at two balls and two strikes. Things have slowed down just a little bit here on the campus of MCC. The game was speeding right along. And now all of a sudden we've slowed down just a little bit. Burt set to go home with the pitch. Line drive, base hit to right field. Coach Dooley's going to hold up Coscarello at third base. Good call, the right fielder. Chet Moore gets the ball in in a hurry. So Jack Nagy records a base hit. And that'll load him up for the Hustlers. Still only one out. And bring up the catcher, number 10, Christian Smallwood. Smallwood 0 for 2 this afternoon. He struck out twice. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. Jason Arnold, head coach of the Satellite Scorps, he's going to once again walk slowly to the pitching bound, take the ball out of the hand of Nick Burt, make another pitching change. Let's see if we can pick up the number of the new pitcher while we take a close look at that. We'd like to thank once again Knutson and Brain Spine Injury Law Office. They provide representation for members of the public who have suffered head trauma or a brain or spinal cord injury. Knudsen Brain Spine Injury Law Office is located in Rockledge at 830 Executive Lane, Suite 140. The phone number for Jim Knudsen, 321-632-2722. We'd also like to thank Planet Fitness, which is located in Rockledge Plaza at 1802 U.S. Highway 1 in Rockledge. Planet Fitness has a 23,000 square foot facility with fitness equipment and cardio machines. The phone number, 321-433-1331. That's area code 321-433-1331. Website keyword, planetfitness.com. We'd like to thank Mike Walker of Planet Fitness, one of the sponsors of our St. Baldrick's Black Hawk Down fundraiser that was held last Saturday. Planet Fitness along with Space Coast Daily, the two sponsors of the event. It was an incredible night. We showed the movie Black Hawk Down uh, at 7 o'clock at Eastern Florida State College in Cocoa. We stopped it halfway through. 
Colonel Danny McKnight, who was in charge of a portion of the ground troops in Somalia in 1993, was there along with five members of Task Force Ranger that were with him. So we stopped the movie halfway through, had about a 20-minute question and answer period from the audience, then continued the movie to the conclusion and had another question and answer period at the end. It was just an amazing evening where you could watch a movie, stop it, and ask the guys that were really there, you know, what happened that day. And not only that, but we raised over $10,000 for the St. Baldrick's Foundation, which if you're not familiar with them, they raise funds for pediatric cancer research. That's all they do. It's all about research. So it was a, it was a positive night all the way ar around as we're ready to resume play. Still can't pick up the number of the new pitcher for the Scorps. Hopefully he'll turn around in a minute. But regardless, the Hustlers with runners on first, second, and third, Christian Smallwood, Looks at first pitch, strike, no balls, and one strike. Smallwood hitting in the number three slot this afternoon can really open things up. MCC's up four to one. Smallwood's at the plate. Austin Nickel is on deck. Here's the pitch out of the zone. Evens it up at one and one. Unfortunately, the pitcher hasn't turned around yet, so I don't know. I know he's a lefty. That's all I can tell you at this point. Smallwood looking at a 1-1 one, one pitch. Just a little inside, close to the zone, but not close enough. Two balls and one strike. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. MCC four, excuse me, MCC four, satellite one winner will play next Tuesday in a region final contest. Off-speed pitch foul down the first base side. Now, I know he's going to turn around now. There you go. Number one, Matt Robinlau is now the pitcher for the Satellite Scorps. Two balls, two strikes on Christian Smallwood. As I mentioned earlier, 0 for 2 this afternoon. He was hit by a pitch last inning. The lefty gets the sign from the catcher, Tyler Cameron. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch tried to get him to chase one outside. He did not, and that'll even up the count at three balls and two strikes. And nowhere to put Smallwood, bases full of hustlers. Great crowd on hand this afternoon, both from MCC and Satellite. Matt Robin Lau's ready to throw the pitch. Three balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. 4-1 lead for the Hustlers. Here is the pitch. Outside ball four. Credit Christian Smallwood with an RBI as he trots to first base. Nagy trots down to second. Coleman LaRoche is now over at third. Ryan Coscarello walks home with the fifth MCC run. That'll bring up the right fielder, number eight, Austin Nickel. Nickel 0 for 3 this afternoon. Steps in with one out, bases loaded. Here's the pitch by Robin Lau. Up the middle, base hit. One run will score. Coach Dooley's going to hold him up. Good call. The charging center fielder brought the ball in. And that was Dylan Wagner, but the Hustlers pick up another run as Coleman LaRoche trots home from the Austin Nickel RBI single. That'll bring up the MCC Hustlers pitcher, number 16, Mark Potter. Score now six to one, Hustlers. Bases still full of MCC Hustlers. First pitch high and away, one ball and no strikes to Mark Potter. Matt Robin Lau, the pitcher, throwing from the left side, gets the sign. He's going home with the pitch. That ball is low and away, two balls and no strikes on Potter. S.P. Perry's on deck for the Hustlers, still only one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. MCC has picked up three runs so far here in the sixth. Pop fly, right fielder chasing it, center fielder chasing it. Ball's going to fall in in no man's land. Everybody moves up 90 feet. 
credit Mark Potter with an RBI single. It was one of those balls, it was hit high, but it was hit between the second baseman, the right fielder, and the shortstop. They all took off as hard as they could. It's a base hit without question. Christian Smallwood scores the seventh run of this baseball game for the Hustlers. Excuse me, that was Nagy scoring. So now it's seven to one MCC. That'll bring up the left fielder number 23, SP Perry. Matt Robin Lau ready to throw the pitch. Bases still full of MCC hustlers. First pitch low. One ball and no strikes. Looks like Eric Adler is running for Christian Smallwood. Adler standing on the third base bag, actually a couple of feet off. He's got a, a relatively short lead. Here's the pitch. Line drive, base hit to right field. One run will score. Coach Dooley holding him up again, playing station to station. Right fielder, Chet Moore gets the ball in rather quickly. Credit SP Perry with an RBI single between the first baseman and the second baseman as Eric Adler scores from third base with the eighth MCC run of this baseball game, the fifth run of the inning. Coach Arnold once again makes his way to the mound. One, two, three. This will be the fourth pitcher of satellite he's used here in the sixth inning. Not quite sure he's gonna, who he's going to put in at this time. A right-hander trotting in, and his number is number – Looks like number 10, Timmy West. Timmy West will be on the mound now for the Satellite Scorps. While West gets his warm-up tosses, we'd like to thank Florida Master Temp. They're located at 3475 North Highway US 1 in Cocoa. Florida Master Temp is an authorized sales and service outlet for air conditioning systems, refrigeration equipment, ice making equipment, and machines. The office phone is answered 24 hours a day the telephone, 321-639-3166. Great crowd on hand enjoying this region semifinal contest between the Satellite Scorps and the MCC Hustlers. Tight ball game going into the bottom of the sixth inning. It was, it was three to one. All of a sudden, the MCC has blown it open scoring five runs in the bottom of the sixth. There's still only one out, and still the bases are loaded. When we resume play, Will Erdman would be set to step into the batter's box. He led off this half inning with a perfect bunt down the third base line. And it's been all downhill for MCC after that. Once again, this Friday night, it'll be a special Little League baseball game. Richard Chapman of Rockledge Little, Be Little League will be coaching in his 900th Little League baseball game. Yep, you heard me right, 900th Little League baseball game at McClarty Park in Rockledge. So we'll be covering that game. Uh, I personally will be at Space Coast Stadium for the game between the Lakeland Flying Tigers and the Brevard County Manatees. I'll be working Kind of behind the scenes, it's Rockledge Night at Space Coast Stadium. Not too late to pick up $2 tickets. Go to the Manatees website and you'll see a no quality collision in Rockledge there on Huntington Lane. If you'll go by there and tell them you want baseball tickets, they'll give them to you for free. Uh, they've got them, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're expecting a sellout Friday night. We'll be at the minor league baseball game. Our other crew will be bringing you over the airwaves Little League Baseball. So now we're ready to resume play. Will Urban will step back into the batter's box for the second time this half inning. Bases loaded, 8-1 to one MCC lead. First pitch is low, thrown by Timmy West. West throws from the right side. Urban one for two this afternoon. He's reached base twice. He walked in the second inning. Struck out in the fourth, and he singled earlier in this inning. Nice pitch by West. Finds the zone, evens it up at one ball and one strike.
Will Erdman wearing number six. Hit him from the right side if the name sounds familiar. He was an all-star, a Friday night locker room all-star, both in football and basketball this year. That pitch is low, two balls and one strike. Nowhere to put Erdman. Jackson Taylor on deck, still only one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Timmy West on the mound. He's the fourth satellite pitcher this inning. Pitch by West. Hits Will Erdman. So he gets an RBI the hard way. Austin Nickel will trot home with the ninth run for the Hustlers. And that'll bring up the designated hitter this afternoon, number 24, Jackson Taylor. All of a sudden, it's 9-1, to one, a base hit driving in two runs will end this game. Three to nothing. Going to the bottom of this inning, the Hustlers have picked up six runs. Taylor hitting from the left side has had two sacrifice bunts this game. Has handled the bat extremely well. Looks at the first pitch low, ball one. Taylor also grounded out to second base, but the two sacrifice bunts were big, especially the one earlier this inning where he sacrificed Erdman to second base, putting Will Erdman in scoring position. Really got things going offensively for MCC this half inning. That pitch is low, two balls and no strikes, nowhere to put Jackson Taylor. Ryan Coscarello's on deck for the Hustlers, still only one out in the bottom of the six. Nine to one MCC here is the pitch. Fouls it straight up to the third baseman who makes the catch, infield fly rule. So now there are two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Base is still full of hustlers, and that'll bring up the MCC third baseman, number seven, Ryan Coscarello. Coscarello 0 for 3 this afternoon. He struck out in the second inning. He grounded out to second base in the fourth inning. He reached on an error earlier this inning. First pitch high and away, one ball and no strikes to Coscarella. The Hustlers third baseman batting in the number nine slot, Coleman LaRoche now on deck for MCC. Timmy West on the mound. He's the fourth pitcher this inning for the satellite Scorps. Here is the pitch. Just off the plate, Two balls and no strikes to the Hustlers' third baseman. Nowhere to put Coscarello with Reynolds on first, second, and third. Bases loaded for MCC. They're up 9-1. to one. That ball's low now. Big time hole, three balls and no strikes. Timeout called by catcher Tyler Cameron. He's going to walk to the mound and have a word with Timmy West. Telling him, I, what do you tell him? He knows what he has to do. <laughs> you just have to put it in the zone because you know Coscarella is not going to be swinging at this one. Three balls, no strikes. If this one's out of the zone, we're looking at a 10 to 1 lead. From the stretch is Timmy West. Here is the pitch. Nowhere close. Ball four. Credit Coscarello with an RBI as he trots to first base. And now the winning run for the Hustlers is 90 feet away from home plate. And that'll bring up the second baseman, number 15, Coleman LaRoche. LaRoche has been on base three times this afternoon. Nice bunt earlier this inning. Pitch by West. Is low ball one. Sometimes you just cannot find the zone and there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Timmy West on the mound, backs away, as does Coleman LaRoche. Now LaRoche steps back into the batter's box. West ready to, to make the pitch. Number 10 throws it. Nice pitch by Timmy West, evens it up at one and one. 
two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning, MCC 10, satellite one. If that runner on third crosses home plate, MCC will advance to region final action next Tuesday. Here's the pitch, just a little low, two balls and one strike. Jack Nagy's on deck, we're not gonna see him. Either this half inning will end or the game will end. Timmy West ready to make the throw. Hits Coleman LaRoche and this game is over. The MCC Hustlers have defeated the Satellite Scorps by a score of 11 to nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Hustlers pick up eight runs on five hits, one error, and three runners left. So, final score of this afternoon's contest, the MCC Hustlers 11, the Satellite Scorps 1. The Hustlers now will face the winner of the Lakewood Booker game that will be played tonight. They'll play next Tuesday. We'll find out later exactly where the game's going to be played. But congratulations to the Hustlers on a big win this afternoon against one of their rivals, the Satellite Scorps. You know, and congratulations to Jason Arnold. There aren't a lot of people that thought Satellite would be this far. A lot of people didn't think they'd even make the district finals. So they ended up with a 19 and 11 record on the year. They have a lot of youngsters coming back next year. The future looks bright for the Satellite Scorps. But this afternoon, it was all MCC. The final once again, MCC 11, Satellite 1. We want you to go to Facebook.com. Check out pictures tonight of our Friday night locker room player of the game, whoever that may be. But you've been listening to the Friday night locker room sponsored by Mike Urban Nissan Cadillac. We hope you have a nice, safe evening.